Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. For the Lord Most High is terrible. He is a great king over all the earth. He shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. He shall choose our inheritance. For us, the excellency of Jacob, whom he loved. God has gone up with a shout, and the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises unto our King. Sing praises. For God, the King of all the earth, sing ye praises with understanding. God reigneth over the heathen. God sitteth upon the throne of his holiness. The princes of the people are gathered together, even the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong unto God. He is greatly exalted. Today is 9-11, 2020, 2020. <clears throat> and I'm going to bring remembrance and never forget uh, September 11, 2001. I was... Uh, extremely troubled that the mayor of New York City did not want to show the lights of the Twin Towers or read the names of the fallen. Uh, they said we'll never forget. But Frank Ziller from uh, Tunnel to Towers stood up and they did it and they sponsored it very glad to say and happy to say and proud to say that we as a ministry have been giving to Tower Tunnel to Towers to since last December. And uh, I was glad that they stepped up and did that. They read the names of all the fallen. There was 2,977 people that were killed through those airplanes at the that day. And uh, many more, I think approximately 7,000. These are the people that have gotten uh, uh, cancer, lung cancer, and many other cancers uh, that have, they've passed away uh, from digging and, and going through all the heap and, and, and breathing in all that junk. So there's, and we pray today for the ones that passed away, of course, the ones after 9-11 that passed away. Their families that had to witness it and have to as it should be a solemn day for us, even though I think a lot of people have forgotten, and that they have to relive it. Now, there's people in high school that have, don't even know about it. It's not taught anymore. And that, that's sad. I remember the day, the next several weeks after 9-11, 2001, how this country was so united so united and just sad that tragedy, December 7, 1941, World War II, this country united, that only tragedies bring this country together. In the 70s, I was working for a company called NCR, and uh, most of the regional managers and district managers were in World War II. They were in their early 20s or teenagers in 1941. And they said this country banded together for the war effort. Everything was for the war effort. Everybody. There was no race, color, or creed. It was one nation under God. And there was, of course, joyousness uh, when uh, Osama bin Laden uh, was killed. We were again one. But it's too far between that we need to unite. We need to stop looking at skin color and start looking up for the Lord. Now, other religions may not agree with me, but I think the inheritance that we have in Deuteronomy chapter 33, and this is the blessing, verses 1 through 4, and this is the blessing wherewith Moses the man of God blessed the children of Israel before his death. And he said, The Lord came from Sinai and rose up from Seir unto them. He shined forth from Mount Paran, and he came with tens of thousands of saints from his right hand 
went a, went a fiery law for them. Yea, he loved the people. All his saints are in thy land, and thy hand. And they sat down at thy feet. Every one shall receive of thy words. And Moses commanded us the law, Torah, even the inheritance of the congregation of Jacob. And that's our inheritance, if you believe that. I personally believe that. That this country was formed under the Holy One of Israel. Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMoshiach, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And also, though, obviously, don't want to forget the gentlemen that lost their lives in Benghazi in 2012. Uh, Ambassador Chris Stevens, Sean Smith, and the former SEALs Tyrone Woods and Glenn Doherty. Glenn Doherty went 300 miles to get to Benghazi because he was stationed in Tripoli. It's much like, I have a couple of hats here from the fire department of the New York and the NYPD. They ran into the towers. They didn't run away, they ran into the towers. And the cows, a lot of those towers co uh, collapsed on them. And even this day, I think about the people that were sitting in those offices, innocent people, truly innocent people, and had a plane crashing through them. And some of them that were not killed immediately, because I believe only 60% of them have only been identified. Some of them had to make a choice. And what kind of choice is it? To suffocate from the smoke, burn to death, or jump out of a window? And the, the sight of seeing them jump out of the window and uh, it just, uh, it grieves me to no end. It grieves me to no end and also uh, Rob O'Neill, the Navy SEAL that shot some of the lot he talks about remembering seeing the lady that jumped out of the window and she held her dress down. Can you imagine? Your life is going to end, but she still was a female and she held her dress down. Heartbreaking. The Pentagon. The fellows and the women on Flight 93 that attacked the attackers. The final words were, let's roll. And, and it, it really saddens me that a lot of these, a lot of our country has forgotten it. And it saddened me and pissed me off to no end that Mayor de Blasio of New York couldn't find himself to have them read the names of every person. I'd like to go to Daniel 9-11. Daniel 9-11. We're, we're going to get to Yom Teruah. Yom Teruah is actually beginning next week on the 18th. and We will get to a little teaching of it tonight. Psalm 47 was part of it. You heard that, the trump of God. Uh, but I also don't want 9-11 to go away without the teaching. And you probably know this, but I thought I'd bring it back to remembrance. Daniel 9.11, it says, Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law. And that word is law of Strong's number 8451. It's the Torah. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing that they might not obey thy voice. I think I taught two weeks ago how important obedience is. And other than Israel, of course, the United States of America was set up under God. And we walked away from it. And I told you what happened on January 22, 1973. Roe versus Wade was decided. Part of 
part B of 9-11. It says, therefore the curse is poured upon us. And the oath that is written in the law, the Torah of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. There's at least 13 scriptures that say, and they have done evil in the sight of the law. They've done evil in the, I'm sorry, in the sight of the Lord. They've done evil in the sight of the Lord. Yeah, we, we allowed a breach. December 7th, 1941, we said that will never happen again. We will never be caught off guard. Yet we were again. Because at that point, it was leading up to January 22nd, 1973. We've been, we were weakening ourselves. Morally, spiritually. And there was a breach. Now that word curse in Daniel 9-11 is Strong's number 423. Very interesting. Because as you know you read from right to left. Okay, so you have the Aleph, and this is how it's spelled. The Aleph. The Aleph um, for space, the Lamed, and this letter is the He. And remember, we read from right to left. These vowel marks are like the A, or are the A. So we read it from right to left, that's Allah. So this is how it moved right, but Allah. Not a coincidence. I don't believe there is coincidence in scripture. That 9-11 was set up by Al-Qaeda, Osama bin Laden. believe maybe two or three months after 9-11 in 2001 I, I was starting ministry I started to go to ministry and the churches were packed the churches were packed overflowing not just our church, all the churches and little by little stuck being packed I believe God allows things to happen to bring them closer to Him. I taught four or five months ago, this coronavirus, corona means king. And I believe the Lord allowed this to happen, to get people to come to closer to Him. They have for a season. And now that season is gone again. And it's sad. At this time, as we prepare prophetically for the rapture, as I believe Yom Teruah, as we read the scriptures last week, in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, 17, that that trump is going to be for the Lord. It will be caught up. Let me read 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I'm going to start at verse uh, 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit the incorruption. 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Verse 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, and I believe it has to do with Yom Teruah, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this, let me just read 53 also. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must be on immortality. The Lord is going to change us. As he says, in the twinkling of an eye. See, tomorrow is not promised to anyone. And I keep saying this over and over and over again. And the Lord keeps warning us. But people have come, become so nonchalant. I shouldn't even say nonchalant. They just straight out reject 
God, Jesus Christ. Even churches don't even speak about His holiness anymore. The blood of Jesus, the cross, the crucifixion, the resurrection. And I've got to correct myself. I've said in the past that the resurrection, and the Lord was in agreement with me during communion today. I've said in the past that the Lord, through the resurrection, destroyed, okay, death, hell, and the grave. And the Lord says, I didn't destroy it. It never had a hold on me. It was just a visual to Satan that you can't hold me. It wasn't a surprise. God always had the authority. He just wanted to prove it to Satan. Remember, the earth is a stepping stone. He always had authority over the devil. He always had authority over death, hell, and the grave. That was a visual to show us and a visual to show Satan. And I had to apologize for the Lord for saying that. Because that, it was already. He's God. He didn't have to do it to prove anything. He's that immense. So, as Daniel 9-11 said, because we have sinned against him, we have opened a breach. A breach. We let our guards down. And we need to spiritually get back to the root of Christ. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The blood of Jesus Christ. And for us, the resurrection. Because that's what proves to us that he's not like Muhammad or Buddha or anything else. It was prophesied exactly what he was going to do. He would come as a, uh, through a virgin, Isaiah 7. He would come as a lamb to slaughter and not open his mouth, Isaiah 53. He will come to set the captives free. To bring healing. The wages of sin is death. That's why I saw when people get, people even leave my church because I'm too strict. I tell them to get off social media, stop jacking around on that stuff. Focus on the cross. That needs to be your focal point. Psalm 1, meditate on the Torah day and night. We can't have any open doors to the enemy. I've blown the show far. All right. Now, I know people that can blow, play the trumpet, they can blow it any way they want. I was taught... Not by a person. I didn't know this at first. But I blew it the first day I learned how through the right hand side of my mouth. And it was all the Holy Spirit. I remember the first time I bought the chauffeur. I went back to the office. I couldn't blow anything. I called the store. It was called the 613 store on Pico in Los Angeles. And I said, my chauffeur is broken. And after the guy stopped laughing for five minutes, he goes, it's an animal. It can't be broken. You have to learn how to play it. I go, oh my God. It was Friday afternoon. I wanted to play. It, was, it wasn't this one. It was a tiny chauffeur, like 35 bucks. But I was very excited to play it, to blow it. And couldn't do it. And Sunday when we had the service, we were in a garage. We were just starting up. And I told everybody, I'm not blowing the show far. We all are going to blow it together. And I blew it off the right hand side of my mouth. And it was probably an unnatural, wasn't that great? But it was glorious. And echoed through the garage. 
People were weeping on their knees. Zechariah chapter 3, verse 1. And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the verse 2, And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan. Even the Lord hath chosen Jerusalem. Rebuke thee. Is this not the brand plucked out of the fire? So when we pull the shofar from the right hand side, I am rebuking Satan. Remember Satan tried to be like God, Jesus Christ. Who sits at the right hand of the Father? Jesus Christ, the right hand. Satan is at the right hand also. So we do it to resist him. To say, you have no authority over us. See, Yom Teruah is about blowing the shofar. Yes, about the rapture. Yes, about uh, the oncoming king. But also to say, we have a, a, a dominion over you, Satan. And we do. On earth as it is in heaven, the Our Father. What is bound on earth is bound in heaven. What is loose on earth is loosed in heaven. We do it, and God confirms it. We have authority over the angels. Why have angels if God is God? Because they can be used by us. God wants us to use the authority. Have the authority. Work the authority against the devil. He doesn't want a bunch of mamby-pamby Christians. Yeah, help me, help me. When you first come to the Lord, yes. But not after that. It's time to grow. So when we blow the shofar, it's like you blow it from the right-hand side of the mouth. And we are blowing, at least I am, to resist the devil. And it goes with James 4, 7. Submit therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. A lot of people say resist the devil, but they forget the part about submitting to God. That's the key. When you submit to God, well, he, he must increase and we must decrease. When that happens in your life, then God will give us those blessings. And keep those commitments. If we can look at uh, Genesis, real quick, chapter 12, you'll probably get tired of that. It's called the Lech Lecha. I'm going to read from verse 1. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, <clears throat> and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. Verse 4. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curses thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. By the way, those curse, the word curse and those, that is separate than this one. Okay. That's why we always need to go back to the root. We lose so much translation from the English, of the Hebrew. That's why I always want to go back to the root of the Word of God. Um, verse 3, let me read that again. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curses thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Verse 4. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was 75 years old when he departed out of Haran. 75 years old. You know, Yom Teruah is a Moed, an appointed time, just like Passover, Pesach, uh, Feast of uh, Unleavened Bread, Hag HaMatzah, uh, Festival of First Fruits, Hag HaBikurim, uh, Shavuot, which you might know as Pentecost, all was, they say, Moed. Okay? Appointed times, festivals. Now we're approaching Yom Teruah, and ten days after that it will be Yom Kippur, and then five days after that it will be Sukkot. Appointed times that God has said, I want to meet with you. Now let's go to Genesis 18. This is when the Lord promised 
Abram and Sarah, you're not going to be barren anymore. Verse 11. Now Abram and Sarah were old and were stricken in age, and to be ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of woman. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, of course after the angels said she would bear fruit, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being old also? 13. And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of surety bear a child which am old? Now here's the key. Verse 14, is there anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. The key right there is at the time appointed, the appointed time. That is Strong's number 4150. It's the same word for feast or festival in Leviticus 23. Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. That means Sarah, I believe, had a son during a festival. During that appointed time. She was barren all these years. But when the path crossed at that appointed time, then she was able to have a child. See, when you're in correct alignment with the Lord, when you're obedient to the Lord, when you're keeping His festivals, when you're walking and keeping His statutes and commandments, when you're walking in step with the Lord, the enemy can't touch you. He can try. But he can't. So next week we will continue. It will be September 18th. Actually it will be the day. And I expect to see you on that appointed time. And please pray for the people that gave up their lives. From the New York Police Department. Fire Department. And all the innocent people. And their families. And the people that were digging. That died of cancer afterwards. And are still sick. God bless you.